DJ Ferris. It's Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Hit me. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Let's get a sports talk. The Nets have hired a new head coach, and it's Hall of Fame point guard Steve Nash. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting this news. It's a four-year deal for Nash. Interim coach Jacques Vaughn will stay on as an assistant. Here's part of GM Sean Mark's statement. Quote, and Steve, we see a leader, communicator, and mentor who will garner the respect of our players. Stephen A., talk to me. Max Kellerman, Molly. This is uh, one of the toughest, toughest uh, positions that I've ever had to take and, and in my career on first take. And here is why. I want to first state that Steve Nash has no coaching experience. But if you talk about... Um, yeah, that's, this one here left field right here. Because he has no experience. It had to be something they like in him. Like he just said he, he felt like he had he a, a great leader. It had to be something that swayed them to hire Steve Nash as the next head, head coach. It's going to be a first time coaching. And, yeah, this is something, this is something that, that, that stunned me when the news got broken that he became the head coach of the Nets. And I had, I had this, like, this is something – that uh, I couldn't believe it. I didn't see this one coming. I thought they'd hire someone with experience, you know, that's out there that's a free agent coach like Nate McMillan. And, and I can't think who else out there. Or let Vaughn still be the, the head coach, but I didn't think this one was coming. I know it had to be something that they like in him. An outlier, uh, an individual that is just special on so many levels. It is Steve Nash, not just as a player, but his mentorship to some degree with Steph Curry. Uh, the brothers that he has looked out for and supported when Quentin Richardson was his aide or was his teammate, and he took money off his plate to make sure Quentin Richardson got paid. When he had his man Stephen Jackson, his former teammate, uh, his teammate at the time, living with him and took him in and looked out for him. Uh, the respect that he has around the league, his smarts, his intelligence, his basketball IQ. Steve Nash is a sensational dude. Um, and if anybody deserves this opportunity, absent the experience that obviously he has as a coach, it is him. Yes, like even though he don't have experience, but this is this is a, this is gonna be a intriguing coaching style. I want to see what type of plays he gonna run, and and with the Nets. But this is a great hire to me because you have. A good point guard mind, a good offensive mind, and and I feel like it's gonna be a new era with the Nets, man. And now that he gonna have a full roster, he's gonna have Kevin Durant back, he gonna have Kyrie back, he gonna have Jordan back. So he got those three guys coming back with this team and a full roster. I feel like the Nets is gonna be one of the top teams in the East, and he deserved his job. Cause uh, like when they say he got so much respect around the league, and and I feel like he's gonna bring a new change to uh, the Nets. It happened for Steve Kerr, who had never coached on any level before, but he took over Golden State and look at the job that he's done. Steve Nash is widely respected and loved by a whole bunch of people in the NBA, black, white, and beyond. Congratulations to him. He deserves it. I get it. But this ain't about him, what I'm about to say. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no way around this. This is white privilege. This does not happen for a black man. No experience whatsoever on any level as a coach. And you get the Brooklyn Nets job. I know that Kyrie and KD have both signed off on this. I know they both support this move. So I just said, I, KD and Kyrie had something to do with this. They had something to do with this. They had to go to the office and, and meet 
with the owners and talk about this. But he had a point. That's why I say, like, you got Nate McMillan out there. Like, you got Mark Jackson out there. Like, like this is not going to happen if a guy that never coach, a black coach, uh, well, they never got the job. Now, that's how you know Kyrie and KD had their hands in the pot, man. They had a hand in there. But I'm thinking about a champion that is Ty Lue, passed up. I'm thinking about a guy who built the foundation for the Golden State Warriors in Mark Jackson, passed up. I'm thinking about the years that Sam Cassell has served as an assistant, first in the nation's capital in D.C., and now with the Los Angeles Clippers, passed up. And it's for a guy, my God, one of the best guys you could possibly meet in your life, and may do a fantastic job, but a guy that has no experience whatsoever. In these times, where we're making all of this noise about social justice, I got news for y'all, Molly and Max. I have said this to people on numerous occasions, right here on this show. Yes. Yeah, like, you could have went to go get Ty Lowe, who is the NBA champion. You could have went and got Sam Cassell, who's doing a good job right next to Doc Rivers. Get him an opportunity. Why well, y'all ain't targeting none of them? Y'all just pass them on by and went to go get a guy with no experience at coaching. No disrespect to Steve Nash. Arguably one of the best point guards of all time. But they could have went and got one of them an opportunity at this job. That was the tipping point. George Floyd's killing, his murder. You know, violence against black men who are unarmed. All of that stuff is true. But the frustration, the protest, and all of these things that you've seen in the streets throughout America, emanating from the black community and disenfranchised communities, is that proverbial glass ceiling. And the fact that it breeds a level of frustration that we can't even put in the words sometimes. You just want to scream. Want to scream to the high heavens. How the hell does this always happen for somebody else other than us? Why is it that we have to be twice as good to get half as much? Why is it that no matter what we do and how hard we work and how we go through the process and the terrain of everything, somehow, some way, there's another excuse to ignore that criteria, to ignore those credentials, and instead bypass it and make for someone other than us. So I'm depressed right now because I have to bring that up. Because Steve Nash doesn't deserve it. I think Steve Nash is going to do a hell of a job in Brooklyn. I think that he's going to resonate with Kyrie and, and, and KD. And not only that, his record in terms of looking out for one brother after another. I love this brother Steve Nash. He is a beautiful person and I'm so happy for him just on his it's going to help him be at the top off the rip because the two main guys that he has coming back in KD and Kyrie. Like, this is one of the best jobs you could get because who you have on this roster to start your start, your coaching career out, you couldn't do no as more for this job. That's why I say any one of them coaches would have got the opportunity at this job, they would love it because – they already have, have a team attached. Face. But when I take into account all that it entails, and I think about the black men that were passed up in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York, New York City, we got Thibodeau at Madison Square Garden, who's obviously highly respected and deserves it. And now we got Steve Nash, who has no coaching resume, but a lot of people believe in him. And should. Yet again, we find ourselves looking at a situation as black people. You know what? Everything is egregious as it 
Kyrie Irving signed off on this man being the new head coach in Brooklyn. I'm sure he's going to do a good job. I know Kyrie and KD ain't going to lose. I'm just saying, damn, as time changes, 